What's up gamers and welcome to another Throne and Liberty video in which we're going to dive into the differences from the Korean version all the way to the global version of Throne and Liberty and their business model. This video is going to contain a lot of details. We're going to go through it step by step. So if you guys like Throne and Liberty and MMORPG content, you've come to the right spot. I'll be sure to cover any new updates that flow from the beta test that is actually kicking off this week you can download the game starting now if you're listening to this you can actually pre-download the game and if you're watching this on the 18th you can go check out the open beta test for yourself so that way regardless of the business monetization you can see if this game is worth your time and we'll be sure talking about that and putting out some guides on this game here on the channel so if you guys like this stuff hit that subscribe button let me know if you do and that way i can officially welcome you to the channel and also a huge thank you so much for the 81 likes on the PAX Day video that I just posted yesterday. It does mean the world to me. Let's get into it. The post starts off with their expression of their values. Feels very mission statement oriented. It reads, as the team has worked with NCSoft to develop the business model for Turner Liberty's release, we identified three tenets that embody our values, guide to our decision-making and serve as the business model's foundation. The first thing being player self-expression is a paramount. Combat and power upgrades should be accessible to all players. We'll talk about that here in a second. And purchasing items from our in-game shop must feel rewarding, but never necessary. The second one is going to give a lot of people some heartburn uh, as it relates to the fact that, yes, due to the nature of a player-driven economy and how this is bringing back some of the old classic MMO feels, there's going to be a generational divide and there's no way shape form about it this has been a known issue within sandbox mmorpgs for the longest time but i think it's a feature and unfortunately not a bug if you're coming from the more modern theme park mmorpgs this does kind of feel a little bit shocking especially with the free-to-play nature of which you should always be aware of they're gonna have to make their money some way and i really wish that amazon went with a buy-to-play model here in the west but it is what it is let's get into the key systems you learn about the game uh in game terms and systems from uh the core of the game's economy and business model below we're going to overview and introduce some of these systems a more detailed version with specific changes can be found on the deep dive further which we'll cover here later in this video this is going to go into the auction house the game uh, passes and it says passes plural because there's a leveling pass and a battle pass two different things to purchase and some of the amazon game updates basically the differences between how the korean version of throne and liberty operates and the version that we will have access to on the 18th of july but also here in september when the game officially releases for the currency we've got some information here lucent if those of you who don't know this is the currency in which that you can purchase with real world money or you can earn it by going through the game in specific pvp encounters or you can also earn it by selling eligible items on the auction house in addition to opportunities for acquiring Luc uh, lucent may be added in the future now a solent is basically like your gold this is the in-game currency and you need a bunch of it one of the things that was actually really clear from the korean version is solent is highly val valuable but the auction house only works with lucent so that's the premium currency solent is the in-game currency used for upgrades and so much more and they go on to say it's the primary used for in-game goods and npc vendors and it is needed to execute tasks like crafting gear upgrading gear and engaging with other key systems then the third type of currency is ornamental coins. Players can acquire ornamental coins through specific in-game activities, such as collecting lore books and promotional events like Twitch drops. Ornamental coins may also be earned through in-game events like the Battle Pass free track, and there will be a shop for players to spend their coins that offer a mix of various different cosmetics. So just to kind of introduce the auction house, this is going to be the plug, the, the plug, <laughs> yay put a flub counter up on the screen let's keep it going the action here is for uh the hub and the player driven economy within throne of liberty where players can trade items and gear with each other the economy in throne of liberty is a little different from other mmos trades on the auction house use lucent the auction house allows players to earn lucent without spending any real world money lucent earned through the auction house can be spent on purchasing in games that require lucent paid and earned lucent to be spent in the same way 
we would like to note that the auction house is a work in progress. You may see iterations of the in-game economy as we work with NCSoft to refine the systems and find further information here later in this video. Pass's uh, introduction here is talking about the leveling pass. This is a one-time purchase per character that delivers an earnable stream of materials and items to enhance the leveling in Throne of Liberty. There is much to explore in Celestrum, and some players may want to experience it faster. Leveling passes does not provide any exclusive power-related items. And this is where everything gets tricky because this is what I would define as a pay to win system right, right out the gate. But that's also to tie into my early review of, well, like these systems of a, a kind of are a part of, you know, free to play games uh, as a whole. And so you kind of know that. And if anybody was hoping that a free play game would come out with the best monetization possible, well, I think those are some high hopes that you got there, cowboy. Anyway, for the Battle Pass, the Battle Pass is a recurring seasonal, uh, roughly every month, purchase sold on a per character basis that delivers a combination of new aesthetic rewards, crafting materials, items, and various in-game currencies in exchange for completing specific daily, weekly, and seasonal challenges. Although battle passes might change from season to season, we are committed to ensuring that each battle pass provides generous values for those rewards. The thing that kills me about battle passes is just the FOMO, the fear of missing out, the expiration of it all. I have too much stuff going on in my life. I don't want to feel like I have to play your video game. And I think that is the natural evolution though of the subscription model. I think we've like, if you think about Wildstar to call back an old uh, a game that I wish we would still have available to us in this world, I think Wildstar would have benefited greatly from a battle pass system as opposed to a subscription just due to the nature of its existence. But you guys can sound off in the comments on that. We can have that discussion in future videos if you guys desire it. In-game store and cosmetics. What are we talking about here? The in-game store will allow players to purchase Lucent for real world money. The in-game store will also sell various forms of cosmetics, including outfits, morphs, animoti, emotes, and more. Items purchased from the in-game store cannot be traded in the auction house. Beautiful visuals are paramount to Throne of Liberty and character outfits are no exception. We're committed to delivering a variety of outfit visuals to allow players to express their own player fantasy and style. We'll start with a handful of options and throughout the game's lifespan, increase the offerings, including completely new styles. And please note, purchase outfits are purely cosmetic and will not provide any player power enhancements of any kind. A portion of the character outfits will feature options to further customize your appearance. Styles, dyes, and patterns are some of the additional options available, ensuring that you have the ability to showcase uh, your unique style and Celestrum. So here's a big key difference. Amazon Games updates this that in-game store will not have solent food or potion consumables. Consumables for cosmetics such as dyes and sewing thread are still available. All right, let's continue on. For the early access, uh, this is gonna be available to players who purchase an early access pack. To learn more about the packs and their contents, visit the early access pack showcase on July the 18th. Early access packs will and can be purchased until the game's launch date. Uh, at which the point they were no longer available for purchase. Purchasing any version of these packs will give players up to five days of early access to Throne of Liberty. And we understand the concern that early access may bring to some players. Because of this, we're taking the following steps. We will have both early access and launch servers. Players who do not purchase early access packs will still be able to select fresh servers at the launch and all players are beginning on their adventures together. Players who start at launch will still have the option to create characters on early access servers if that is their preference. For a set period of time, players from early access servers will not be able to transfer to launch servers. And for the auction house clusters, these will not mix early access servers and commercial launch servers. This is designed with fairness in mind to prevent players from commercial launch servers from accessing any items sooner than intended for the early access servers or being overwhelmed by players with a head start. Transferring from a launch server to an early access server will still be allowed. Subject to availability, server transfers will be available at launch and we will further explain systems in the future. So again, I'll be sure to cover any of these updates for you guys here at the channel. Now let's take some time to deep dive into the various things we just kind of talked about. The auction house is the hub for player driven economy with the throne of liberty. Now, when we highlight player driven economy, that is a key aspect 
of what we're talking about here. This means that money, Solostrum, Solostrum, so uh, increase that flub count, please. <laughs> Within the uh, Throne of Liberty, this is where uh, you're gonna have value actually in that. There's going to be massive value. And if players can trade that, even if the game doesn't sell it to you directly or exchange it for Lucent, there will be a black market that forms around it. It's just the nature of the beast. Anyway, uh, where players can obviously trade items and gear with each other. Trades on the auction house will use the premium in-game currency Lucent, allowing players to trade goods with other players in exchange for Lucent. Lucent earned through the auction house can be used anywhere in the game, including the in-game shop, battle passes, and leveling passes. This means that players who choose not to purchase Lucent for real world money can still earn Lucent by selling items through the auction house and use the Lucent to purchase any of the game's offerings. The auction house has a two-tier tax system. First, there is a system tax that removes a flat percentage of Lucent from each transaction. Second, the, the auction house has a tax system where a portion of the tax is set by the guild that owns the castle. This addition tax rate can be set by the castle owner with a certain range, and any trades that can take place will have some of the castle tax dis uh, distributed to the various PvP events that can be earned by guilds and distributed through their guild members as another avenue to earn Lucent by playing the game. This is going to, first and foremost, highly incentivize being in a guild to really get the maximum amount of the game, which I think is the intention. They want these guilds warring, they want these fights brewing, and they want the incentive to be there. Anyway, they continue. The current levels of earning this tax of the castle tax and the uh, system delivery event tax with the additional exciting activities on the horizon and in the castle siege, guilds can earn Lucent through various methods, not just by winning the overall siege, but they're gonna we're gonna dive into that with further nuances in later articles. Now, the only items listed by players can be purchased on the auction house. This means that top end gear is likely to be very limited, especially in the early game where guilds are vying for control and keeping the best in slot gear for themselves. It also means that the total number of people who have top end gear is always limited to the total number of times an item has dropped. Only base level gear can be listed on the auction house. Any gear that has been advanced or upgraded in any way is not eligible to be listed for sale. Gear obtained from instance content, such as co-op dungeons and guild raids, are also not eligible to be listed on the auction house. This means that players must still play and upgrade their gear to earn and to reach its highest gear level. Even if they acquire gear from the auction house, there are still four major uh, four major gear <laughs> progression tracks that influence the player's power. Another point on the uh, flub counter. Anyway, learn uh, the, how the auction house interacts with the systems and balance the empowering players through the in-game economy while ensuring players need to engage with the game's progress. So here they are. Uh, the four systems are the weapon mastery system. Uh, it cannot purchase anything in the auction house that will increase your weapon mastery. For skills, skills require training books in order to enhance. Training books cannot be purchased directly on the auction house. Training books can be acquired as rewards through gameplay or craft the skill researcher NPC. So crafting a training book, uh, book requires two materials, a gem and parchment. Gems can be acquired through the auction house. Parchment is not available on the auction house and can only be earned by playing the game. Gear score. Increasing your gear score requires an item called growth stones. Growth stones cannot be purchased directly on the auction house. Growth stones can be acquired as rewards through gameplay and crafted at the weapons, armor, accessories, crafter, NPC. Crafting a growth stone requires three materials, a gem, magic powder, and a crystal. Gems can be purchased directly through the auction house. Magic power powder uh, can be purchased indirectly through the auction house by purchasing gear and dissolving it into magic powder. Crystals can only be earned by playing the game and are not available in the auction house. Gear traits, increase your gear trait requires uh, you to enhance your existing gear with another piece of gear that is of the same type with the same trait. For example, if you want to upgrade a sword with a hit ray, uh, trait to increase the hit amount, you need another sword with the plus hit as a trait. You can also increase gear traits as trait extracts, which will allow players to extract the trait value in a particular item and sell it on the auction house. This is useful when a player wants to acquire a piece of gear but cannot uh, that cannot be listed on the auction house. And if you extract the trade, 
you will destroy the item, but allow uh, you to still sell the trait itself. And that is a whole heck of a lot of information, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about where you fall on it. I think progression is an interesting thing that they're doing here to try and balance it. And Lucent is an interesting idea to try and solve the problem of how do you have an MMO without a subscription that at the same time rewards player trade and players actually playing the game. This will require players actually playing the game and it will be felt if the game's population obviously dips below a massive number, but we're going to expect that. Like you should note, all MMO launches cannot sustain the hype, nor will they be able to over the long run. Don't let it fret you out. If you're having fun with the game, you're doing it right. And I'm not here to tell you otherwise. Let's talk about the leveling paths for a little bit. Uh, let's start with the difference as Amazon Games updates. The purchase price has been reduced, is now purchable uh, with Lucent instead of real world money, allowing players a free to play path to acquiring the pass. I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, I think that's a good change from how it was. Uh, so basically, this is going to just help you with uh, various cosmetic, solid progression materials and other valuable items. It is intended to enhance the player's journey from level one to level 50. The leveling pass will have both a free track that all players can enjoy along with a pay track. Everything other than that, cosmetics found in the leveling pass are earnable through normal gameplay. Players can unlock the rewards at each level by completing in specific game content. Battle pass. Let's talk about the changes first and foremost. Added additional cosmetics to the battle pass. Updated the final rewards cosmetic to a premium level outfit. The battle pass purchase price has been reduced and is now purchasable with Lucent instead of the real world money, allowing players a free to play path to acquiring this pass. I think that's a good change again, just like with a leveling pass, because if you don't want to purchase it and you just want to sell stuff on the auction house, you're going to have an avenue into these uh, different systems if you so choose. They're going to add additional battle pass shop points to the free track and the battle pass points can be earned prior to completing the entire battle pass. And they remove the premium only quests and rewards, allowing all players the same amount of access to battle pass EXP. Then as we wrap up, blessing a slot, uh, Solistrum, <laughs> I'm butchering the name. For those of you who may have played on the Korean servers or watched content creators, you might be familiar with the Blessing of Solistrum. This is an optional purchase which provides a variety of benefits to the player. Blessings of Solistrum cannot be available through the region supported by Amazon Games at launch. As we continue to evaluate how to offer needs change and serve the needs of our players. And looking ahead, uh, we're excited to invite players to experiment these systems in the open beta and create your character, join a guild and fight for Solistrum during the open beta running from july the 18th through july the 23rd and uh yeah that's that's what we got here for you as we finalize this video as we wrap it up as a message of hope to send you guys on your way um with all things honestly i see this all time and time again social media tends to exacerbate mental illness in people this is uh, i'm just as guilty and this is something that i want to bring up because i get the irony of obviously listening to these words on social media but I say that to say it's important to remember to step away, take a break from these platforms. Things can get heated, things can get dramatic. And at the end of the day, they're just words that people who have emotions are expressing. I've said social media as an emotion driven engine. So that's why you tend to see the most emotional or the mo the, the craziest reactions or, or takes on things because that's what gets shared and engagement. So just note that doesn't represent the whole. And if you're feeling down, about the state of the world or what's going on in your life. Just note that you are worthy of love. You are uh, worthy of being loved. Just note that. And uh, and if you ever are struggling and you ever just need somebody to reach out, you can always hit me up in my DMs as I am here. Uh, because as somebody who has uh, suffered with depression and anxiety uh, for well over a decade, uh, thankfully uh, no more, I, I have to say it sucks. And, uh, and I just wanna let you know that it can get better and it will get better. Anyway, love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. Thanks for sticking around all the way through the uh, message of hope. And hopefully guys, I will see you in the next video and or live stream, especially as we jump into the game this coming Thursday. For Ginger Prime Loves MMOs, my name's Brian has been and will continue to be. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, take care.